Hello, everyone, and welcome back to In The Mix. I'm Third Eye Rye. You already know what it is. <laughs> what's good? And I'm Dominique, a.k.a. D-Nice. Hey, what's up, D-Nice? What's good, Third Eye Rye? Hey, you already know what it is. <laughs> well, let's drive right into it. Uh, you heard about the missing girls in D.C., right? Have I? Yeah, I heard mm. about it. It's so upsetting. I wish they were doing more Indeed. about the situation overall, but, Indeed. you know, we are doing stuff locally. Yes. ODU students held a solidarity march on Tuesday to make sure that the media doesn't forget about those girls. Mariah has more on the story. Mm. <laughs> Several organizations came together on campus to bring awareness to the missing girls in Washington, D.C. I spoke to some of the ladies from the Beautifully Natural organization on campus who helped put this event together. Our goal behind a lot of the events that we do is to inspire women and to promote self-love and confidence in their natural hair and their just their self-image altogether. I think that's really important because with media and just relationships with people you deal with on your day-to-day -day basis, there's people that are going to be in your ear telling you not to love yourself. So I think right. this is more of a sisterhood that just brings everybody together and promotes self-love. They spoke about the importance of events like this. I think this event was very important because it's 64,000. Female, black females and little girls missing in the United States and there has been no airtime for it. So I feel like we need to get the word out there so we can find these girls. These girls are somebody's children, the grown women, they have children, they're people's family members, they need to be found immediately. And I think this is a serious problem that nobody else seems to care about. So I feel like I should make the first step and make sure that everybody knows about it, everybody's knowledgeable because we need to find these girls. It's very important. Great. I really loved it. It was a great start, but this is just only the beginning. We have so much more coming up for next semester. Like, I'm trying to eventually plan maybe a march in D.C. since that's where everything's going on. Like, I'm trying to make this really be known because it is a serious problem in the community. The NAACP will be hosting a follow-up event on the 18th. See you there. Things like that make me be proud to be a monarch. Yes, me too, definitely. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to see the students standing up for a cause. Exactly. Another reason I'm proud to be a monarch is all the opportunities we have here. Yes, there is so many. You know, the Communications Club held a free headshot event open to all students. Yep, Alexa has more on the details. Online credibility is very important in the professional world. That is why having a professional headshot is essential. Here in the business building of ODU, ODU's Communication Club is holding its own free headshot event. Professional headshots leave a good impression on future employers, and Communication Club president tells us why. I think I'm um, having those professional headshots and having that um, as the almost tagline or that one thing that you see on social media or LinkedIn um, is definitely the first thing that one employer sees, and that first impression always really matters. Students were allowed to take as many pictures as they wanted until the perfect headshot was taken. A perfect lighting in pictures is what determines a professional photo. A photographer explains more on different lighting. I'd say it mostly depends on the lighting. Uh, the fact that they set up a scene specifically for the photo because you know if it's taken on like the the frontal camera of a um, of like a phone or something it does not look very professional because of the uh, you know the lens type and you know the graininess so it's more of like the fact that somebody came out to take that picture you know instead of just they like took it on the spot. Pictures tell a thousand words and it is important to have your headshot updated to match your current appearance. So I feel like if there's a big change in your look or you have a beard or you've gained weight or whatever, um, I think you should definitely get another picture. Professional headshots can be very costly, so students were pleased that everything was free. I heard it was like 75, mm -hmm. um, and the upwards of 75 dollars. Like, like JC Penny or something like that. It was free. You can't beat that. This is one of the many events hosted by ODU's Communication Club. So come out, communication majors and minors. See, those are kind of events that we need to be going to. Exactly. The ones that actually prepare us for the future. Yes. And, uh, you know, usually taking professional pictures costs way too much money for a college student like myself with other expenses. Right. But um, with things like LinkedIn, they're so necessary. That's very true. But, you know, to switch gears... We got a lot of talent here at ODU. We all know ODU has so much talent here. Mariah actually mm -hmm. got to interview a student artist named Kobe. Kobe. Oh, yeah. I, th I think I met Kobe. Lit. Yes. <laughs> so I'm Mariah McKenzie here with Kobe. First, um, where are you from? I'm from Portland, Oregon. Uh, 
or the Pacific Northwest, West Coast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, diversity that was one thing that I was searching for the most uh, and just something different I wanted a, a change in my environment and somehow I ended up here so. <clears throat> you just recently dropped coconut oil shoddy right? yes yeah shoddy I feel like I said it <laughs> um, okay so what or who or you know where is the inspiration uh, <laughs> well, I would use coconut oil. Um, I had started to make a R and B EP, and um, it was just a random idea that came to mind. And I don't even think it started like as that big of an idea, but I kind of just ran with it, what I had, and then just build. Up, uh, I was building upon it. And ended up with coconut oil shoddy and oh and I know like for as far as like the beat um, because I made the beat as well so as far as the beat goes I had I was trying to make a different variation of a beat that I already had it was a whole song I already had and I ended up with this beat and then that's when ideas started to come and started coming to me for a, a song and then it was like okay now I'm at coconut oil shoddy and. Yeah, it's just like I want to do something for women of color, pretty much. Like I want to make some like anthem, something that could be uh, heard around the world, and you know, make make people feel good about themselves. So yeah, I feel like a lot of people. Well, I know I use coconut oil, so yeah, exactly. I feel like a lot of people <laughs> use it. Yeah, I like the song. So thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, you said you made the beat. So mm -hmm. Rap, produce. Um, I like to call myself a curator, uh, just because I I like to just put together music, whether it, even if it's like not mine. Um, like I, I enjoy helping out other people with their music. Uh, I don't think that I have like the keys to success or like you know the, all the knowledge or whatever it is, but helping others like with their music also gives me ideas for my own music so it's like um yeah i just that's just another thing i enjoy uh i like sometimes dj i just know a lot of music too so it's like yeah. uh right exactly yeah yeah <laughs> so, i'm an ox dj yeah <laughs> get at me <laughs> so would you consider yourself like a conscious rapper um, not necessarily, but I do like speaking, um, about things that's on my mind. I, I like speaking my mind, uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a conscious rapper. Uh, I just feel like that's limiting myself, but I, I, yeah, like I said, I like speaking my mind. I like speaking on political issues, social issues, cultural, whatever it may be, because I don't think there's enough of that or it's just not brought to light under something like music, uh, which is such a powerful tool, you know, yeah. in the world. So, yeah. It is, yeah. So, um, who inspires you as a rapper? Like, who inspired you to become a rapper? Or uh, what inspired you to become a rapper? Okay. What inspired me to I think just my love for music. Uh, I've loved music since I was in diapers. Like I would be trying to rap lyrics to Tupac or Biggie or whoever it was at the time, Snoop. Um, and like as I got older, I would just write raps for fun. Um, and it always had been a hobby. And technically, it is still a hobby. You know, I'm a student first, and then like musician second. Uh, Like the well-known artists, I would say I've always been a big Kanye fan. Um, always been a big Lil Wayne fan. I mean, those were probably the two people once when I really got into music that I would listen to all the time. Like, so how do you feel about like new age rappers, like Lil Uzi, Lil Yachty, like you know? 
like the what they call like the SoundCloud rappers or like the bubblegum yeah. rap or stuff like that. Um, I, guess you can say I don't mind it. There's like, a, of course, there's. I'm not gonna like everybody. I'm a fan of Lil Uzi Vert. I'm a big fan of Lil Uzi Vert, actually. Um, I like. I think I saw like a clip of somebody co-signed him. I think it was like Meek Mill co-signed him like in 2015. And then that's when I found out about him. And um, yeah, I've been a fan since then. Lil Yachty, I'm not really a fan of. Like, it's just certain rappers. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't mind it. It's of course there's gonna be some type of change. You know, like we're in the internet era. Like anybody can become popular, um, and overnight. And uh, I mean, I give them credit because some of those rappers you wouldn't think will last that long you know it's like oh they have one song and then they they'll you know fade to black whatever but uh i i definitely give them credit like the longevity of the these artists like they're they're capitalizing on their success and yeah. you know it's, what kind of things are you working on now like what can people expect you know coming from um uh, well, like I said, I got an R&B EP, uh, and I don't, well, actually, no, I do have a name for it. It's called Escalate With Me, so I'm kind of continuing with the whole Escalation theme. That's, like, my brand, um, and probably have five songs on that. Uh, I think four out, of the four, four out of the five songs are done. I just need to finish one more um so you have like a date? <laughs> uh i don't my my goal is to put it out by like may or june so like either end of spring beginning of summer is is the goal and i think it's very possible to do that i got a couple months so i think i could do that um and it's like this is kind of uncharted territory um it's like very personal in a way uh just because it's me speaking on like not relationships but just like more like situationships that i had and uh yeah it's really it's really interesting but i'm excited to release it just because like i said it's, it's something different and i feel like it's really good of course i i gotta have my have confidence in myself but yeah i feel like it's really good um and then i'm working on a rap ep uh that's also five songs i don't have a name for that yet um and i it'll be a little spaced out so i probably won't put it out to like maybe the fall but i do want to put out at least one song for it during say like the summer or something um so on the r, the r &B EP, are mm. singing or no like I have like melody, but I can't sing. Okay. Yeah, so right, 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 yeah. If it's not me, then there may be somebody else singing on it. But um, yeah, that that if that's the case, yeah, <laughs> I can't so sing. Far, no, no singing. No, I can't really sing. Like what you heard on Coconut Oil Shoddy is like the <laughs> most singing you'll get out of me. Okay. Well, it's like a you know rapper. Rappers do that. So right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't like me actually trying and it's like man this guy it's terrible he should never do that again yeah it was like i know my limit <laughs> so it's like yeah if i get to a certain point i'm like uh okay maybe i should just put on a singer on here or something you know yeah. so how would you explain your sound like for somebody that hasn't heard you because me personally mm. when i listen to your um music i feel like you're very different mm -hmm. so i can't really like you know pinpoint it right like, how would you I don't even know really how to, I the goal when I first started making music was to make my own sound. I didn't want to sound like everybody else. I that's one thing that annoys me the most out of like the whole music game is like people sounding a lot alike and it's like I feel like it, you just need to switch it up and then plus that's what different differentiates yourself from like the the rest is it's like okay he has a unique sound what else does he have to offer you know so um i would still say it's hip-hop um i take a lot of influences from like electronic music i love electronic music i would just like listen to it when i'm studying or whatever maybe um not really 
Mm. I would just say that's my main influence. <laughs> Yeah, so I can definitely tell, like, you're, you know, <coughs> pushing forward with, like, a different sound, mm-hmm. like, challenging yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's really dope. Thank you. Yeah, that's the goal, challenge myself. I, like, I challenge myself to, to be better. The only thing I will say, though, it's kind of hard. Like, not everybody will jump on to, like, continue to listen just because of so how different it is. Yeah, it's like, so. Uh, SoundCloud, uh, soundcloud.com slash A-O Covey, A-Y-O-C-O-V-I. Uh, you can find my single getaway on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Google Play, um, everywhere. everywhere. Uh, and Coconut Oil Shotty will be on there soon too, actually. Uh, okay, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I did recognize him. He was at an event that my fraternity threw last semester, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Nasty New Theta, to be more specific, at Old Dominion University. That's what's up. I always love being introduced to new music. Hey, speaking of new music, y'all should check out my stuff. I'm Third Eye Rye. You already know what it is. And I'm going to be at the ASA Fashion Show on Saturday. Don't miss it. Well, speaking of fashion, WODU's very own My Bros, Cliff and Loso from the Moto Show have also put something together. They went to a modeling workshop held by Midori Ame. Hey, isn't she a previous America's Next Top Model contestant? She is, and wow. she just won the Miss Black Virginia USA pageant. Hey, congratulations to her. Now let's check it out. Yeah, yeah, you already know this is the Motor Show. Communicate to be great and love through the hate. What's your motive? I am your boy Los Baby. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great interview today. We are, I'm gonna introduce this lady right here because she's taller than me and I want to stand on the chair. And I ain't really want to, you know what I'm saying? So, um, we are at 4100 Virginia Beach Boulevard Central Library where our guest, the facilitator of the New Year's Fashion Workshop here today, America's previous next top model, fan favorite, crowd favorite, creative director of iFashion Magazine, the multi-talented model, Miss All right, so um, how old were you when you first knew that modeling was your career calling? It wasn't so much about knowing it was my calling. I just knew I was good at it. So I started when I was 14. I was a scouted in a mall, like many people back in the day. Um, and then I think that once I was 18, 19, I started to get more professional in it. And once I was 20, I was I was committed to at least doing more to better myself in modeling and in that industry. And um, after that, it's just been, you know, it's, yeah, it's just kind of taken, right, right, exactly. Like practicing when I was younger and trying to like make things, you know, kind of come together outfits and stuff. And once I was able to wear heels, you couldn't get me out of them. So. Yeah, I don't know about that. My sister, she used to work on my mom's hair, but she didn't make it because she's too small. That's what they told her, but I don't know. All right, so I want you to describe your type of modeling. Is it sassy? Is it aggressive? Is it more, you know, a little spicy? <laughs> Sure. So um, in my classes, I teach a character walk, which is something that everybody has. You know, it's your kind of natural walk. It's what really works for you, what's comfortable for you, what almost, you know, comes naturally. And then I teach, you know, European style, I teach a runway style that is uh, available. You know, anyone can do it, right? I think that my personal style is a little sassy. It's a little Naomi. You know, every once in a while, if the long hair is there, I will flip it, and I just can't help that. It happens sometimes. But yeah, my natural walk is a little sassy. I got a little attitude. Now we know. How important is social media playing a part in the industry of modeling? Sure. So social media is probably the main channel for viewing a portfolio right now. And it's become so much more relevant, you know, as as technology just gets better and better. As we find more ways to interact with each other, social media is relied on more heavily. So um, there are women who will send me their Instagrams and not send me a book or a portfolio. And, and, it's, and it's interesting because sometimes they have professional, completely professional Instagrams, and other times it's a mixture of the two. And I like, I like to see both. I like to see a selfie. I like to see what you look like in natural light, um, every day, very plain makeup, or if you're done up. I like to see you know, the, the two. But I also like to see the professional photos. So if you're going to give me your Instagram or your Facebook, make sure there's at least something professional on there. Um, 
you're a photogenic person so um <laughs> i know you're probably shy sometimes in taking pictures but how do you know the younger people the, the younger girls and the younger males get over being shy because some people are camera shy some people are not how do they kind of get over that fact of actually being camera shy um practice you have to just keep doing it um, I, you have to smile in the mirror. I'm, I'm in the mirror all the time talking to myself. I know anyone who's ever been my roommate thought I was crazy, but that's just what it is. You have to get comfortable um, acting. It's really kind of what it is, right? So you have to get comfortable with yourself, and the only way, the easiest way to kind of do it is to practice as much as possible. And I was blessed because I grew up on a stage, so I really didn't have that much sort of, you know, it, was, it wasn't a learning curve for me, you know, when it came to camera. So I'm, I'm used to being on stage in front of, you know, hundreds or thousands of people and just singing and stuff. So I was like, oh, great. I don't even have to sing. Like, I can just close my mouth and just smile. Like, this is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my, that's my pageant talent. Yes, yes. I'm good in the shower singing. But, man, it's not enough. You know what I'm saying? We got to sing in the mirror, too. All right, so um, last question is, how can we find you on social media and uh, any upcoming so everything on social media is Midori Ame. MidoriAme.com is my website. You can find me on Twitter um, at Midori Ame. My Instagram right now is Miss Black VA USA. I had to change that one over. But everything else you can all find me. You can always find me at Midori Ame. Thank you, Miss Midori Ame, for coming through the Motor Show. University. We are here. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all tune in next time at the Motor Show. Yeah. digital and a physical, and the physical way to put in my portfolio book is my life. That is my baby, that is like, you pass it off and you know you want to get that back, right? Um, so the first thing in my portfolio book is, anyone know? <laughs> You're awesome. Yes, it's going to be a headshot. 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 That's dope to see that people are holding these events like that, you know, to really give back to community and help people that are aspiring to follow in their footsteps. For sure, exactly. With so much negativity going on right now, we need events like this just mm. to feel uplifted and positive. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth. The answer is always love. So that wraps up our show tonight. For updates and to become a member, go to WODUstudios.com. And we hope to be seeing you featured on our next episode. Third Hour Ride. You already know what it is. <laughs>